Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. What can the laity do about the evil that has swamped the holy priesthood? A number of things, actually. First, prayer. Absolutely no doubt about it. A couple of days from now on the Feast of the Assumption of Our Blessed Mother, a reminder, first, that ultimate victory belongs to Almighty God and His Holy Church, however small it may be at His second coming, a 54-day Rosary Novena begins, initiated by the Holy League. There is much wrong in the country and certainly much more wrong in the church these days, and faithful Catholics should be pleading for the intervention of the church triumphant in the struggle going on here in the church militant, an intervention that may have already begun with the exposure of the McCarrick evil. And the reason we say that is simple. What used to be only spoken of in whispers and by a few faithful Catholic sites, like Church Militant, is now on the lips and postings of every Catholic who is plugged in, and it is this. There is a dominant homosexual culture, not a subculture, a dominant culture, ruling the priesthood in the church, from seminaries all the way up to the top. This wickedness has now been brought into the light. And now, at least one bishop has publicly suggested as much. Hopefully more will follow suit soon. So yes, we pray, absolutely. But as good Catholics, we know that faith without works is dead. It is not enough in the face of this evil to retreat into piety because it's comfortable. We must stick our necks out and challenge the evil, like the wimpy kid who finally, having been shoved around for so long by the playground bully, finally gets up off the ground and decks him. Faith and works. So what works can we do? Church Militant has composed a letter which we are suggesting you physically print out, personalize to your bishop, and physically mail it to him. And this is not a letter to go just to liberal bishops. This is to go to every single bishop in the United States. Whatever you think of him, good, bad, doesn't matter. Every bishop needs to get this letter. You also need to send a copy to the papal nuncio. The address for that is on the link. Why the nuncio? Because when he starts getting copies of the letter, he will start contacting various bishops and asking what the heck is going on. And that is a phone call no bishop wants. Even a liberal bishop hates that call. The whole governing apparatus of the hierarchy is to never rock the boat, smooth over everything, keep the peace. Well, this letter definitely will ensure no peace. And there shouldn't be peace in the face of this monstrous evil. There can only be true peace when it is eradicated. So to the letter. It's 10 points addressed specifically again to your bishop, respectfully yet directly, expressing what you want to see done. We're not going to go over all of them here and take too much time, but just a handful so you get the point. One, you want your bishop to issue a public statement saying the root of this problem absolutely is homosexuality in the ranks of the clergy, including the bishops. He must say this out loud. He needs to publicly announce whether he himself is homosexual or not. A public denial and refutation is the only way to be certain. Closeted gays in the ranks of the bishops need to be dragged out into the light. That your bishop immediately bar any of his priests from public ministry who are gay and who they know and they know who they are. If that means a whole restructuring of the diocese, then so be it. It should never have gotten to that point to begin with. That's better than souls being damned as a result of under the leadership of these clerics who teach perverted doctrine. In order to achieve action in all this, your letter to your bishop says, until the rest of these steps and all this stuff is undertaken publicly, you are immediately ceasing all donations to every diocesan collection and will be structuring your weekly offering to your local parish in such a way as to make it difficult for the bishop to get his hands on any of it. This filth, Pope Benedict's words, this filth in the ranks of first the bishops must be brought to an end. Let them try to advance their wicked agenda with no money. Let them send homosexual seminarians and priests to Rome for study so they can come back with advanced degrees and be promoted up the ladder with no money. Our blessed Lord set up a hierarchical church. We don't get to rebel like Martin Luther, the heretic priest, did. But we do, as canon law specifically provides for, 
get to voice our concerns when we see things going wrong and they are going wrong. Now understand why it is necessary to respectfully demand your bishop publicly admit that homosexuality among the clergy is responsible for all of this. First, because it's the truth. Second, because the homo heretics like Whirl and Supich and Father Martin and Thomas Rosica have already launched their it's not a gay thing campaign to conceal the evil and take people's attention off the real matter. They want to talk about McCarrick. They don't want to talk about the homosexuality in their own ranks. Like hell, and we do mean hell, is this not a gay thing? It absolutely is a gay thing and these liars know it. McCarrick wasn't raping women. Those who covered up for him were covering up a homosexual predator. All the reports now pouring into the public by seminarians and priests are reports of homosexual assault. And your bishop needs to stand up publicly and say this out loud so everyone knows exactly where he stands. And if your bishop, even if he's a good bishop, there's that word again, good bishop, doesn't do this, then you need to hit pause on thinking he's a good bishop. Because given this moment, when the opportunity has finally arrived to begin to eradicate this evil from the ranks of the clergy, if he doesn't openly declare the truth, then something else is going on with him. It's just that simple. Yes, there is such a thing as black and white. And this hashtag Catholic Me Too moment is one of those moments. There are homosexual predators among the ranks of the bishops, a network, a web of the demonic that must now be ripped apart and anyone who knows it must stand up and declare the truth. If a bishop lets this moment go by and does not see it for what it is, which is a grace from heaven, then he is blind or a coward or a participant in it, any of which makes him unfit to be bishop. If he can't join the fight, then he needs to get out of the war and resign. And if he won't do it of his own accord, then he needs to be <clears throat> encouraged by having his funding choked off. Another thing that can be done is to join the Silence Stops Now rally in Baltimore this coming November. See that link also. Almost a thousand faithful Catholics have already signed up to be in Baltimore in just a few days since the announcement. A great moment, unlike any other in the history of the church in America, has arrived. Faithful Catholics, at last, have been given, given a rallying point, a focal point, to demand that the church be brought back on course. It's gonna be a hell of a fight because how well entrenched the homo mafia is in the operational structure of the church. Remember, they've been busy at this evil for decades and decades, and it isn't gonna change with just a single volley. They are hoping that you get bored, distracted, lose interest, remember November's months away. Saints never lose interest in the church. They love the church and will die for the church if they have to. What has been going on is the work of Satan and you and I have been afforded a great grace to be able to confront him face to face and unite our souls to the heel of our blessed mother and the sword of Saint Michael and deliver such a powerful blow to him so as to send him reeling back into hell. We need to seize the church back from this evil. Good bishops need to join in this fight and call it out for what it is. Wicked, cowardly, perverted, political bishops need to be exposed and driven from the ranks and starved of funding until they are gone or at least rendered hamstrung by financial losses. Print out two copies of the letter. Read, pray, sign, and mail your bishop and the papal nuncio. And then, if it is at all possible, go on to the site and commit to going to Baltimore for the bishop's annual meeting where the church militant can out loud publicly plead with the church triumphant to reverse this evil. The moment has arrived. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.